Joe Riley is a 74 year old that came to the um, Healthy Life Summit 2, the event in um, Orlando a few weeks ago. In uh, working with him, I looked at his LP little a and, I, and it was 450. I said, Joe, that's a world class number. He said, well, I know, but it's a heck of a lot better than it was. And I asked him what it was before. He said it was over 1,100. So <clears throat> Joe has uh, the, by far the highest LP little a I've ever seen and that I've worked with. He's, uh, as you might imagine, um, got a significant family history. Uh, he's had an aortic calcification surgery for that, and uh, he's uh, had recent uh, ancestors die of aortic valve calcification. What's more is that uh, Joe's LDL has been up, L LDL, bad cholesterol, has been up around 235 to 250. So a lot of strong evidence that Joe has not only LP little a, significant levels, huge levels, as well as FH, familial hypercholesterolemia. Now let's go back and remember I said he's 74 years old. So how's he doing this? Well, one of the secrets that he told me is that he's doing a lot of uh, uh, time-restricted eating. He's lost a lot of weight recently. I'm going to put a picture up of a pre-weight loss uh, Joe Riley, and we'll let uh, Joe tell you his story. He dropped his um, LDLs from 235, 250 down to 75, and his um, LP little a, like I said, down from over 1100 to uh, 450. I uh, have a couple of uncles who died rather early, one at 55 from heart attack, and another one at uh, 49. The one who died at 49 was a colonel in the Air Force, and he had, of course, excellent medical care for the time. That was 1982. And he had uh, some sort of uh, uh, hardening of the valve in his heart and they tell him that that would break off at any time. It just could break off at any time, and that would be it. So he retired, and within a few months, he was gone. And then my, my grandparents, both on my mother's side, both died of heart attacks. My father died at 49, but not of a heart attack. So could so, I interrupt just a second? Uh, this was an uncle that had that um, calcification? Of the valve, yes. Yeah. It was the calci calcification of the aortic valve? I believe it was the aortic valve, yeah, that, um, as well as I remember. And this was an uncle? An uncle, yeah. On your mom's or dad's side? My mom's side. Okay. So they the, said reason I, the reason I ask is that... Um, when you get a significant elevation of LP little a, the uh, folks 400, 500 and more, they tend to get uh, calcification of the aortic uh, valve. So I wonder if that's if that uncle is not uh, not where you got this. But please, uh, thanks for your patience with my interruption. Why don't you go ahead? Well, continuing right along in my uncle's footsteps to a degree, I. Uh, had been waiting before I uh, got to to do any got hot on doing some treatment, and which was a little over a year ago. And I, although I'd been dieting for two years on and off, so I was waiting. My cardiologist was waiting on the valve, my valve, to close down enough so it needed to be replaced. And he just said it was, you know, uh, calcifying and it would sooner or later it would get to the point where it needed to be uh, replaced. So then uh, I had been doing a lot of research and I happened to cross this reference to a cardiac calcium scan. So I followed that and I uh, said, well, I've never had that done. It sounds like it's fairly easy to do. So I went and had that done and uh, 
score came back. I'm nearly solid uh, stone inside, 6,114 for a calcium score. And so that that upped the urgency of getting this valve done a lot sooner because I had both left and right arteries in the heart were one was 100% blocked, the other one was 99% blocked, and the aortic valve was 75% blocked. So I was just kind of cruising along there, waiting to hit a brick wall, not knowing that it was there. And I was having no symptoms at all. So, I, in fact, I had done three miles on the treadmill the day I went in and got this result from the, the scan. So anyway, that kind of, that score uh, prompted a... Uh, an aortic valve replacement the next week, along with a three-way bypass. So that all went smooth as piece of cake. I didn't even have to take an aspirin after surgery. I don't, I don't know why. Some people seem to have a lot of pain. I had no pain, whatever. And then, uh, so from that time. When was that? What year? That was June last year. Okay. Last year. Okay, so at that time, I had a uh, an LDL calcium, an LDL cholesterol score of 234, and uh, which, of course, you know, isn't any good. Right. And, so uh, if I LDL, could, let me interrupt well, again. So yeah. an LDL of 234. Usually anything over 180, we begin to worry about familial hypercholesterolemia. And here's one thing we haven't mentioned yet. What was your LP little a value? Okay, my little a value at that time on that, that same day was 1135. And let me repeat it, 1135 for an LP little a. As I've mentioned to uh, my viewers a few times, I've done a lot of LP little a work. And um, I've seen several folks in that French Canadian uh, gene pool that have LP little a values four and 500 level that we mentioned earlier that tend to get that aortic valve calcification. Uh, as I mentioned with you, when you and I shared that down at uh, the Healthy Life Summit 2 in Orlando, that's a world-class number you had there. What was the number when uh, when you and I met each other last week? Well, in exactly 11 months, I've whittled it down to 450, which I there. thought was making great strides until you told me that was still a little on the high side. <laughs> Being... <laughs> it is a little on the high side still. But I will tell you this. There's, a, there's another thing about that. As we discussed, there's evidence that it's not, uh, especially for those uh, LP little a patients, it may not be a, an absolute number that you're going for so much as it is a percent decline. And you've had well over a 50% decline. So um, I think you've, uh, you've done some excellent work there. Well, that, that made me happy when I saw that 450 down from what it was. So that's for sure. When, so, we, when I mentioned that, uh, excellent work. What, uh, tell us what you did. You had well, a significant I, weight I had, loss. Didn't you? I had been researching on the internet, and uh, so the total weight loss to date, along with so over two year period, is uh, fifty pounds. Wow, fifty uh, pound but, weight loss. That's incredible, Joe. I was at two thirty five, and I now. After having attended the summit, I put on five pounds at the summit. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> there was some they did food. many carbs in that plant based yeah. in those plant based meals, didn't he? They did. And they wanted to eat three times a day. I don't I I have only been eating about once a day, more or less. <clears throat> and uh, so by changing my diet to only eating essentially in a very short window once a day cutting out all carbs that were that are not in a regular large salad, a, a Greek village salad, and uh, no other no other source of carbs other than a small handful of either Brazil nuts or pecans, which I love pecans. 
So that was about it. That was only if I needed a little snack. So my numbers came down to uh, uh, 78 for an LDL, a uh, cholesterol HDL ratio of 2.3 in my uh, HDL cholesterol went up from that, what it was a year ago, from 42 to 75 at the same time. HDL went from 42 to 75 going on 11 months and 11 months go losing 50 pounds using time restricted eating restricted to a couple hours a day and um, watching your carbs watching my carbs no carbs that were not vegetable based period no okay. pasta no bread no uh, anything that would no wheat I, I cut out all grain products completely following another guy I follow online, uh, the Wheat Belly doctor. The Wheat Belly guy, yeah. And so I, and he, and I've upped my uh, DHA, FHA, FHA, I think it is, uh, to a therapeutic, so called therapeutic dose of uh, 2,000 milligrams twice a day and I also omega threes sorry uh, the, and your omega threes is that true? omega threes yes right yeah. and I also uh, take four uh, olive oil extracts a day from dr. Gundry okay and yeah, I also, I've heard some of his stuff I'd I'm not entirely there with his concerns about lectins, but uh, I do think sometimes there's a there's some value to his point that sometimes food is just a vehicle to to get olive oil into your mouth. Well, I'm I'm definitely getting in the olive oil because I put that on every salad, along with balsamic vinaigrette. And uh, so with those. And I, the other, the only other thing that's kind of notable, I guess, is I'm now two things. One is Dr. Berg's uh, uh, vitamin D3, which has a plus on it for K2. So I've been taking K, that K2 vitamin D3, 10,000 IUs once a day, five days a week. I, my current D3 levels 98, and I need to trim that down to a little bit below 80. So I'm only going to take it five days a week instead of every day. Okay. I think that's wise. All right. And let's see, my total cholesterol was 175. I forgot to mention that a while ago. Your total cholesterol is 175, but in your, um, you said your LDL is 75, 85, something like that? The eight LDL was 78, and 78. the HDL is 75. Very good numbers. Very That's good. It. And my uh, my triglyceride HDL level or uh, ratio is also pretty good. What is it? But, uh, I gotta gotta check it right quick here. The major th uh, determinant is usually your uh, HDL level. And with an HDL level of uh, in the 70s, you're probably going to have a good uh, triglyceride over HDL. Right. Triglycerides, one, two, three. And my HDL, 75. So it gives me a 1.64 ratio on those two. And then, I, bet that's, I bet that's a lot better than it was um, 11 months ago it is I don't remember what it was I can calculate it but anyway um so to summarize where we are so far you're um how old are you Joe well I'm 74 and uh oh yeah my my CIMT said that my arteries are 80 so okay. Got some more work to do, and I presume it's in this little A category to 
see an improvement. But so 74, and I'm in pretty good shape. I don't have any real aches and pains of any particular kind. I can still do three miles on the treadmill anytime I want to. And uh, I have moved some of that to go outside to walk around the block instead when it's not too hot. I'm in Florida, so we, we, we don't go outside when it gets hot. You're in Tampa, right? In Tampa area, yeah. So when you do three miles on the treadmill, how often are you doing that? About three times a week. At what pace? A slow pace takes okay. maybe a uh, little out an hour and 10 minutes or so to okay. do that. I'm not breaking the treadmill or causing it any damage whatsoever. <laughs> but that's okay. Walking, there is, uh, there are few exercises that are more important than just walking. Um, yeah, we talk about high intensity interval training. We talk about resistance training and uh, those are very, very important. But unless you've got a good base of walking that you do each week, um, you need to add that. That's very important. Um, so to summarize where we are, you're 74. Um, you've got a couple of um, significant challenges from a genetics perspective. It looks like you've probably got some version of FH, familial hypercholesterolemia with a an LDL levels uh, occasionally up to 235 to, uh, to 250. In addition, you've got some world-class levels of uh, LP little a, at one point over 1,100. Um, you did some great work in terms of um, improving your health. Uh, an hour of uh, treadmill work, three miles, um, three times a week, but lost 50 pounds, mostly with uh, low carbs, and time restricted eating, restricting it to one meal over about a one to two two hour period. Uh, when you did that, you dropped that LDL from 235 down to 75, increased your HDL up into the 70s, and uh, dropped that um, LP little a from over 1100 down to 450. Not too bad. Excellent work. Really, really good work. Well, um, I have diabetes, of course, I guess. That's tell us about your, I appreciate you raising that. Tell us about your diabetes. Well, I had uh, suspected for quite a long time that I might have had some problem with diabetes, but my, my score on a fasting test really didn't show anything spectacular. Because it always, if you fasted, then it gets down into the normal. Mine would get down into the normal range. So I would have scores of 80, 85, somewhere in there, which didn't seem bad. Well, uh, over the last four or five years, though, I've had these episodes where I would uh, go somewhere, like go to the show on a Sunday afternoon, and before we got in the theater, I'd be getting shaky and I you know and I thought that was low blood sugar that was doing that so I would just go to the snack bar in the theater and get something to eat to stop that shaking and go on and watch the movie so I finally discovered uh, with a uh, bagel following uh, Dr. Bernstein's book that uh, my I did a little challenge with a half a bagel and it took five hours for that bagel uh, raising my blood sugar. I forgot exactly. Well over 200. Well over 200. Well over 200. It took five hours for that to get back in line. So then when I did the glucose challenge test for the Healthy Life Summit in Orlando, I had a score of 255. And, I'm, and I happened to have one of those Libra Life uh, freestyle continuous glucose monitoring devices and I was able to track in five minute intervals exactly what my glucose was doing while I was doing the test for the glucose at the Quest lab. 
So it went to 255, but the bad part is that it took seven hours to ever return to number to normal. And mm. In fact, it didn't get to 255 until after their two-hour window. My, uh, I think they had they recorded that I had 204. Well, it, another half hour later, it was at 255 on my own measuring. So what that what that kind of highlighted what I was worried about, which is that all these years I've been eating uh, carbs, of course, not knowing that there was anything wrong with carbs. And my carbs were jacking my cholesterol, I mean, uh, blood sugar level up every time you eat. So, of course, I was eating three times a day because everybody else was eating three times a day that I was around. And I know that I had massively high blood sugar numbers for years and years and, and not even aware that it would, had no idea it was taking hours and hours for my score to ever come back down to normal. So when I started fasting, uh, intermittent fasting and cutting out the carbs and everything, I kept on checking my score and I was looking for ketones too. And my score uh, stayed in the 80s except when I had something to eat and I was not just having a little piece of meat, you know, like a half a chicken breast and a large salad once a day for quite a while. My score would go up to near 120, but it would come back down in a reasonable amount of time, an hour and a half or so. But that is not the way it was for probably 40 years of my life. I know I had it jacked up way high. And had no idea. So um, when you did that half bagel challenge, uh, Bernstein's half bagel challenge, how high did it go then? It went to 225, I okay. believe it was, yeah. So that was the first, first time you discovered you had full-blown di diabetes. Well, I didn't know it was full-blown diabetes. I thought that was just an exceptional thing as a result of eating a bagel on a, an empty stomach. <laughs> okay. And it was, it was when you and I talked down at uh, Healthy Life Summit, too, that you realized that you'd uh, uh, punched at least one of the buttons uh, for full-blown diagnosis going over 200. Right. Okay. So the magic question or the, the mysterious question for me is uh, – how is it I have not managed to have a heart attack while having these astronomical scores in the calcium department? Uh, and, and I got thinking about it. In 19, um, I had my first angioplasty in 1989, 88, 88 in April. And I had to go back. I still had a little pain coming, so I had to go back and get a second one in November 88. And on that one, the, the cardiologist who was doing it, the balloon, said that my, my calcium is definitely turned to stone because it took 17 atmospheres to break that one up. Mm. So stop squeezing off the blood supply when I did something. So for whatever reason, and also this kind of backed up by the uh, CIMT score uh, with, with echogenic uh, plaque, echogenic uh, calcium in my heart, is that all, all, all points in there, the calcium shows that it's solid as a rock, apparently. And so you don't, on the CIMT, you're, are you saying you don't have any uh, inflamed soft plaque? Uh, it doesn't show any. No. Okay. It Good. shows. It does show that I have a uh, plaque burden of twelve point seven, which is yeah. not. Good. But my my right and uh, right coronary artery was one point four echogenic bulb, and my uh, 
Another one, the internal one, was 1.3 echogenic. Left CCA 2.1 and a bulb of uh, 4.7 echogenic and a uh, carotid, right carotid of 1.8 echogenic. So what I'm seeing is that somehow or other, my body turns whatever cholesterol it gets into stone in a big hurry. So, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm uh, hearing too, that um, you, I think you're in some ways, you know, it's unfortunate to have LP little a and and FH to the extent that you've you seem to have had it, but on the other hand, you don't seem to be inflaming that plaque so much. It's just going more towards a, a stable plaque, right? Which I guess is a good thing. I so, think so too. And uh, let's see. So that was from 1986 when I started thinking about what happened then. So the only one to uh, concern me now is these two scores and this plaque A, which is the plaque burden on this thing at 12.7. So I got to get those down. So how do you plan to do that? Well, let's see. I'm going to follow my coach's explicit advice, and that's to take some niacin at the 2,000 milligram level twice a day, which I am doing. Okay. Uh, and that's that's Coach Brewer, by the way. Okay. <laughs> and uh, and I'm thinking that. How about your Go ahead. Uh, I'm. I was thinking there's probably some additional uh, DNA tests he probably wants to run to uh, see exactly where I'm coming from on a few other things that might relate to this. We can look at a, at a couple of those. Uh, how about your weight? Are you at the weight that you want to be long term? Not yet. I'm at uh, one. I was at 174 when I got to the summit last weekend in Orlando, and then I was 179 when I got at home. I think the road between Orlando and Tampa caused me to gain weight. Uh, so. Uh, I'm, I'm headed for my ultimate goal, that I believe, would be 161, okay. with, uh, which would put me at the 22nd percentile of the BMI chart. Okay. So I'm on the way, and I make little bobs up and down here and there, but I'm making pretty good progress over the long term. So That is a great story, Joe. Um, I appreciate you sharing it. Are there any other items that you want to add? Well, it's good to uh, to talk to somebody who actually knows what all this is about. Usually you go to the doctor and as soon as you ask for a test, they start asking you why you want to test. Yeah. It's like they cost something for them. <laughs> yeah. So... Fine. I'm in better hands. Well, I appreciate that, and um, I am. Uh, I'm glad that you've 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 done the majority of the hard work already, losing that 50 pounds. That is a major uh, life-saving effort, and I applaud you for. I know that that takes a lot of pain and, dis and discipline. I applaud you for getting that part done, and. Um, uh, I think uh, given that, given what you've demonstrated, you can clearly uh, make it to the next level. Well, my goal to, on the next level is to see my brand new great granddaughter, who's three months old, two days ago, to see her get married. That's my, my next big goal. So that'll be a few years yet, I'm, but uh, I'm on the path. It'll be a few years, but I'm betting on you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
If you hit the uh, like button, and for sure if you subscribe or share, the algorithm reads that as a strong message that humans think this is interesting and important information. And the algorithm can share it more than any of us humans. Um, <clears throat> speaking of uh, sharing, uh, the, one of the best ways of sharing is on social media. We've got active Facebook, Instagram, and uh, LinkedIn uh, activities going on right now. We've recently started up things in uh, Pinterest and uh, Twitter, so we'd love to see you there. Check us out. Finally, um, <clears throat> with over 500 videos, a lot of people are saying, I can't find this video or that video. Our new social media uh, manager, Kim Hermosa, is starting to work on ways to help with that. So join the community. Uh, you can click on the links below and um, <clears throat> you can get a little bit better uh, access. Thank you again for your interest.